Good morning, folks. At home, in the water, no meds, seven pounds, two ounces. Adam Seth Davidson arrived in call at 1.21 a.m. this morning. He's even better looking than the sun in 304 and 211 angstroms combined. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours of my wife's pregnancy continuing to present the corona hole systems on our star. We've been watching the solar wind drop to lower intensities, and that ended just a bit ago as the phi angle flipped up top in blue, and we entered the next heliospheric field sector. Geomagnetism holding steady this morning, but more intensifications of the stream are expected. Folks, after the Tennessee tornadoes, the systems kept chugging along to the south. While the devastation thereafter has paled in comparison to Nashville, the lightning displays have not. So we'll begin the three days lightning map sequence zooming in on those Tennessee storms. Now after that evening, the lightning did die down to nearly non-existence, but roared back as the convergence line caught the flow up through Mexico while still connected to the low moving offshore to the north. And that continued yesterday and into the evening as the storm aspect of that system headed offshore as well. And while that low is now offshore, the one to the north of it is going to use the southern lows track to pull southward, delivering a minor version of a nor'easter to the region there. Couple earthquake links up next. First, they are determining that older faults cause less violent shaking. The more rigid the fault rocks, the more high frequency vibrations we see. And that rigidity gets ground down into more smooth transitions over time. And so we head specifically to San Diego, where one of those relatively newer and more rigid faults exists. They have released a city-specific seismic hazard report, indicating that a considerable portion of the city could be shaken beyond repair the next time a significant rumble occurs in the region. The full report is long, but worth the read if you live nearby. And indeed, the fact that major earthquakes don't happen all the time there means that when they do occur, the rigidity will be higher and the damaging shaking will also be higher. We're heading out for two stories on Mars, and we're starting with the Moreau Crater. It's possibly the most irregular and misshapen crater on the Red Planet, but it sure is pretty to look at. It's got a central rebound peak sitting two kilometers high. And interestingly, a simultaneously released story indicates that an organic compound found in biofuels and even living mushrooms is still present on Mars. Well, those craters where water lasted the longest, like Moreau, are indeed the best places to look for the fossils of that life. Now we've had two articles on quakes, two on Mars, how about two on the Sun? The first one most of you can probably guess, but it was indeed important to dig in and observationally confirm that electric currents are critical to solar flare activity. When sunspot currents are neutralized, we get less flaring, like we see here where the core interaction region between positive and negative is fully canceling the plasma flows. The more lateral spreading wide active regions almost never cancel their currents, and that is indeed where we see the largest solar flares occurring most commonly. The Other Sun article is a crazy exception to an excellent general rule. That rule would be that it would sadden me to see a paper on solar climate forcing retracted from a major journal. Just about the only way this would not be tremendously upsetting to me would be if I happened to notice the paper. I called out its flaws. I called for you to ignore it and its crazy author, and indeed saw the paper as hurting the cause rather than helping it. Well, by now I'm sure some of you have guessed that this was Zarkova's paper from last year, the one I called out for being horrendously flawed, called for you to ignore, and identified as doing more harm to the community than good. Turns out I'm not the only one who noticed flaws in the modeling. Hopefully we can all move past her fake out of about half this community and focus on the real science moving forward. Like this, Alma coming through with one of the coolest stellar shots I've ever seen. They say it's a double ejecta nova event where first a spherical shell was released and then the jets formed and produced the phenomenal sight we see. The icing on the cake here is that this has officially been named the 15th water fountain object in the entire known universe. The oxygen produced in the nova interacting with the surrounding hydrogen is directly producing water in the energetic electromagnetic environment literally star water. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now it's 420 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.